Just a one-shot gone horribly wrong. Or rather, I guess it never even began. I wrote a Dungeons & Dragons one-shot a colleague wanted to commission. I say commission, but I obviously did it for free as a team-building event. I was in the middle of my MBA, burnt out but still agreeing to ridiculous asks. No fighting or violence should be completed in two hours, etc, etc. I mean, the whole TTRPG is built around combat, but okay. So I thought I'd keep away from medieval because medieval settings can get, well... Medieval? First time using cyberpunk, and I took weeks to research, world build, prep, and not a single person showed up. It was heartbreaking, thinking I want to shut my table off for random people like this who don't slash can't appreciate how much mental energy it takes to do this, build games, and prepare to run them, only to find out nobody wanted to come in the first place. Felt horrible waiting on that Zoom call. Look guys, I get it. Stuff happens, you don't have time, you'll lose time, etc. But the least you could do is tell your poor dungeon master what's going on. I mean, I'm sure the vast majority of us dungeon masters would prefer you show up to the game, but just tell us what's going on so we can try to schedule around it. There is nothing worse than sitting in an empty Zoom call with your notes and your battle maps and no players. To say the least, my heart goes out to this dungeon master. Make your own magic item, I just need to approve it. Every player loves to hear this. I immediately begin searching for one that is fun and makes sense for my character. Is an instrument of illusions alright with you, DM? Sure. Awesome. I came up with a backstory to bond the item to my character. As a street kid, she worked for a cruel city merchant that employed children to pickpocket and sabotage competitors. One day, she had enough to steal the loot from the merchant's shop so she could perhaps sell it to help fund building a better life in a new city. She couldn't find a buyer, so decided to teach herself how to play and entertain taverns for money as she traveled. The illusion aspect of the loot sparked her interest in magic. Ta-da! A young bard is born. Fast forward a couple years, in-game, to the start of the campaign. My character meets the others, and we team up to solve a shared problem of necessity. The party is formed. A successful first session. The second session begins. Our party is confronted by a group of thugs that single me out and say, We're here for the thief. Turns out they were sent by the merchant from my backstory who is now rich and powerful enough to hire goons to use divination magic to track me down and get that common loot back after all these years. My character hates the merchant's guts and also treasures the loot, so she refuses. The party isn't really bonded enough to stand up for her and the players just seem annoyed that my backstory is causing problems for the party already, so they say things like, uh, the merchant won't stop sending people after us until you give it back. You did steal it after all. It's just a loot, I'll buy you one later. Not wanting to derail the story with my backstory that clearly nobody cared about, or wanting to get into a fight our level ones might have trouble with even if they all support me, I give the loot back. The others seem happy to continue on with the main story. I have to spend all my gold to buy a competent pouch. Oh, a, a component pouch. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, a component pouch, because it's cheaper than any instrument I am proficient in. Later on that session, we end up getting into our first combat after all. The fighter bulldozes over everything with what they reveal are dual plus three long swords. They each have magical on-hit effects that they can trigger a few times a day. The warlock is happy to show off their homebrew item that allows their eldritch blasts to pierce enemies and hit others further behind. Nobody seems to recognize the hilarious discrepancy. Everyone is having fun though, so it is what it is. Fast forward a few IRL years to the end of the campaign, we are all level 10. The fighter obliterated the BBG with their swords before it got a second turn. Nobody ever bought me that replacement loot. The end. I mean, I'm really happy that all the players had fun with this game, and I'm happy that the Bard ended up continuing the campaign and going on for years in-game. I mean, having a campaign that lasts that long is a testament to a good group. Of course, I can't ignore the awkwardness of stealing away one person's magic item while letting everyone else keep overpowered homebrew stuff that absolutely wrecks the game. I mean, just for starters, one major reason why you don't give people super powerful magic items at the first session is because the magic items you find later on are going to mean a hell of a lot less, which is something you don't want. I mean, yeah, it sounds super fun to get something super powerful right at the beginning, 
But that is a super short-sighted point of view for the vast majority of games, and something I see way too much for what it is. I wonder if the DM expected the party to stand up for the bard, but if that's the case, I expect when that didn't work out, the DM would allow the bard to get the loot back in some way, but clearly that never happened, so... Honestly, I don't know the rhyme or reason of this DM, and I think the more I start to think about it, the more I'm going to go insane, so let's just move on. I have been playing D&D for quite a while now, both as a player and as a DM, but during the pandemic, I lost my main group and decided to start playing online via Discord. I played a couple one-shots and short games until I found a group where the DM was planning to run a long-term campaign. DM was an experience, but I didn't mind, so I decided to join. When I joined, the party there were already two players that had already been recruited. They were playing a cleric and an artificer. None of us knew each other, and the DM was conducting interviews to find two more players. He interviewed a player who wanted to play a druid and was looking for a game for her and her friend, so DM decided to invite both of them. So she joined to play a druid while her friend was going to play a rogue. Once the party was full, we started playing. Both druid and rogue were overly excited to play the game to the point they would overreact to every single thing that happened in the game, which was a little annoying, but at first, I thought it was a good thing. At least they were invested in the game. We played for a couple of sessions, and as the story started to move forward and characters start to interact with each other, things didn't go super well. Our characters were essentially forced to work together, as in most campaigns, and the personality of my character, who was the lawful good paladin, instantly clashed with the personality of the rogue, who was constantly acting chaotic and without morals. Initially, this was all in-game, and I had no problem with a little bit of conflict. Not every party has to like each other, but the rogue stated her frustration that she wanted all of us to be friends right now and that I was making it difficult. I said that it was just roleplay. I wasn't trying to start fights or anything like that, but that my character was slow to trust and that my hope was that eventually they would learn to work together and actually be friends, to which she agreed. But things uh, did not improve as time went on. The more games we played, the more chaotic the rogue started acting. As the rogue, she was the most adept in the party at finding information or treasure or hidden stuff. But rather than sharing anything with the party, she started to keep everything to herself. And on many occasions, the party got into trouble for missing vital information that she had all the time, but she just didn't want to share. My character was the only one that would speak up every time one of her lies was exposed. She also had a habit for inserting herself and stealing the spotlights from me and the other players. She was constantly acting as if the entire campaign was her own story, and that we were there to help her achieve her goals. So every time we went with a course of action that wasn't what she suggested, she would get all mad at the party, but mostly at me since our characters disagreed the most. Cleric and Artificer were playing chill characters that had no care in the world, and Druid was always taking her side, so most of the time it was me versus her. However, at this point, it was all in-game roleplay, and it wasn't affecting me outside of the game. Things then escalated. Through the course of the campaign, the rogue was looking for these keys. The keys were magic items that could open portals to other realms and were central to the story plot, but up to this point, the only person that had found them was the rogue, and she was keeping them all secret. DEM clearly intended for the party to work together to gather these items, but the rogue made it her own quest to collect them by herself. I didn't care enough, and my character didn't know this was happening, so I just never said anything. The first incident occurred when the party was at an elven city. We all decided to do our own stuff and investigate our own different plot lines. My character found out that an old friend of his, another paladin that he hasn't seen in many years, was in the city and I wanted to talk to him. I invited the party to come along, and Cleric and Artificer said yes, but Druid and Rogue, who had no interest in paladin business, declined and went to do their own stuff. I had a conversation with this NPC, and we bonded over over our stories, at the end of which, he is saying that I was a good friend and decided to entrust me with something. DM then mentions that this guy pulls out one of the keys and gifts it to me to protect. When the rogue heard this, she instantly stepped through the main door of the tavern and inserted herself into the conversation as if she had been there. She started asking the NPC a bunch of questions in regards to the key and asked my character if I would give it to her. I said, Yes, you could have a look at it, hoping this would be a good time for her to reveal information she had been withholding all this time. But then she instantly proceeds to take it and try to steal it from me, which of course turned into a fight. I managed to get it back, but as we were taking a long rest, the key suddenly disappears the next morning. It doesn't take a genius to figure out who has it at this point. So I decided to confront her, to which she lies her ass off. 
I passed my insight check to discern it was a lie and kept pushing for answers. At this point, I was actually getting pissed above game. So I decided to cast Zone of Truth with permission from DM. And she says, go ahead, I have nothing to hide. She didn't even try to make the saving throw and is now under the position where her only options are to tell the truth or to just stay quiet. I proceed to ask her a bunch of questions and expose her lies. She tries to lie many times, which prompted the DM to tell her that many of those things were actually not true and that she has to tell the truth. So she decides to stay quiet. For my character, that was just confirmation that she was the thief and they got into a big fight. As the game ends, she breaks out of character to tell me that I am constantly acting against her and starts crying in real life. How she's just trying to have a good time that I am constantly ruining her fun. She leaves the call and she is not seen for the next couple sessions. Myself and DM talk for a while and I tell him that I was actively trying to avoid PvP or something bad, but at that point I thought Zone of Truth was fair. He agreed with me, so I felt I was not in the wrong. We played a couple sessions where she didn't show up, until she did. Everyone acted as if nothing had happened and we continued the game. That bothered me because I wanted to have a conversation above board, but DM thought it was better that we just forget about it and move on. So the next thing happened. At one point, the cleric of our party decides to contact one of the villains of the story, an evil sorceress, to have a conversation with her to figure out her motives. He does so in secret because he is afraid of how the party is going to react, and they set up the meeting. The sorceress shows up to the meeting at a tavern disguised as a regular human woman to avoid calling attention to herself, and they proceed to engage in the conversation. So far, it was an amazing moment in the campaign. I must admit, my character would not have been on board with this plan, but as a player, I was totally into it. However, as their conversation begins, the rogue again tries to take the spotlight. She tells the party that she needs to go to the tavern for some made up reason, and we all enter the room as the cleric is having this private conversation. I make a point to her that cleric is having a private conversation and that it would be rude to interrupt them, but she proceeds to ignore and interrupt. She then begins to question the hell out of this woman. DM realizes and makes us all roll insight checks to see if we notice that she is lying. We all fail, of course, because she, the woman, is one of the main villains. But Rogue does not care whatsoever and keeps interrogating this seemingly random peasant lady. The level of metagaming bothered me and I brought it up to the DM. So DM makes her stop, which she proceeds to ask if this woman wants to join our party. She, of course, says no, but Rogue keeps insisting and insisting that she must join the party. I was done with it, and it had already taken half of our game that day. So I took her character aside and told her not to do that, that inviting random people to join the party was not okay, and that our quest was dangerous, and all the other reasons why it was not okay. So, big fight ensues. She breaks out character again, starts crying, saying that I'm stealing her big moment, quits the call, and is not seen again. The druid also joins this time, saying that I'm ruining her friend's game? In an attempt to de-escalate the situation, DM says that we are going to have a talk at the beginning of the next session to clarify, but of course, she doesn't show up. DM doesn't want to continue the campaign until we resolve this issue, so I proceed to play a video game. But all this time, I was feeling awful and guilty that it was actually my fault this campaign was going so badly. In any case, we had the conversation, and by conversation, it was an hour of her saying that I was attacking her and being the worst. At least the cleric and artificer at this point began to take my side, since they also realized she was overreacting to the whole situation, which at least gave me some relief. I make it clear that the actions of my character were all in-game and nothing against her, but that I was having issues with some of her behaviors. But in order to move forward, I make the promise that I will be more laid back as my character. We played a couple of sessions, and I took a little bit of a background role. Since I was playing a paladin with high charisma, I was usually trying to be the face of the party when it came to social interactions, but every time the rogue interrupted, I just let her deal with it. At that point, I didn't care anymore if our party succeeded or failed. At the end of the day, it was apparently her game. It all came crashing down... again. One session, we were participating in some sort of arena event. I wish I was more invested in the situation, but honestly, at that point, I did not care for the outcome. DM clarifies to us that this event is supposed to be for fun, and that there is no risk of dying or anything like that. Combat starts, and as a paladin, I was allowed to bring my horse to the game. It's my turn, and I decide to cast Bless at a second level. I bless myself, the cleric, the artificer, and for my fourth creature, I bless my horse, which I cared a lot about. We were all at the front line, so it made sense to me. That was it. The rogue and her druid friend lost it. They started screaming and crying that I wasn't changing and that I was prioritizing my horse over them. 
They said I was the worst team player and they both left the call after that. We were all left speechless. DM is feeling super bummed about it and calls it a night. Next session, I asked the DM if Druid and Rogue are going to return, to which he said that they will continue to play, to which I told him that I was done and I wished him good luck with the game and never came back. I was super sad that my character's story never got resolved. I was super invested in the campaign and the story, but could not stand playing with those people anymore. In retrospective, yes, she was an awful player with main character complex, but every time the reason why she acted like this is because the DM allowed it. DM was shy and didn't want to confront her with her actions, so he just let it happen. Well, at least she didn't totally ruin online D&D for me. After leaving the campaign, I decided to start my own online game, and I am now playing with an amazing group of players and having a blast being their DM. No one in the game fights at any point. All character interactions are kept in game, and outside of it, we become really good friends. Sorry for the long story, but I really needed to get that off my chest. Now, we've said many times that in-game interactions can bleed out of game. This effect is actually called bleed, and it's a really real thing. However, if you are experiencing bleed in a negative sense, then you need to talk about it out of game. You need to have a discussion about it. And clearly these two are not doing that. Their solution to this problem is seemingly just to leave the call and or scream at people, which yeah, that's, that's not gonna do anything. I mean, the OP even said it. They want to have an above table talk about this, but no one was willing to actually do it. And this is the definition of letting it fester. The DM, the other players, they all just let this fester. They let this issue continue on and get worse and worse and worse and worse until it bubbled into an explosion and you had someone leave the group. That's not fun at all. Another component here is main character syndrome, which yeah, is never great. I actually think the general concept of this rogue working against the party can work with moderation and maturity and collaboration with the DM and the players. I mean, right now I'm rewatching some episodes with Erika Ishii in Critical Role Campaign 3, and spoiler, 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 but they're playing a character that is working against Bell's Hells, and I thought it worked really, really well there. That's a great example, but clearly that's not what we're seeing here. We're not seeing a character who's just working against the party. They want the party to work for them, which yeah, in that case, I can't see that working in almost any game. Overall, I'm just glad the OP got the hell out. I think I remember this one because it's the anniversary of my grandfather's death. This one has KJ and Mage from some of my previous stories in it too. Anyway, the important cast in this one are basically them and the Dungeon Master, though there were at least one or two other people in the game. Either Mage or KJ invited me to join the DM's game. I wasn't really interested because my grandfather had died that morning, Thanksgiving Day. Mage suggested it would be a good distraction for me, and DM was okay with me joining, so they helped me roll up a paladin quickly, which I figured was a good idea since we were playing in Ravenloft. We get to the DM's house. I should also note, this is my first time meeting this guy. He gives my character the once-over for approval and says something like, I guess your character is a five-foot-tall obese elderly woman then? It takes me a second, and then I explain I was a little out of it making the character and focused mostly on the stats, etc, and not the descriptors. I'm not sure if he was joking, and I just didn't get his humor, because, again, I was out of it, but anyway, I fix whatever part needed fixing, and we go on. I don't recall much of the actual game other than it was a fun distraction, and that when the session ended, our characters had arrived at a graveyard for whatever part of our mission. I warn everyone I won't be able to come the next day because my family's dealing with a lot right now, and I have to babysit a younger cousin while my stepdad and his sister make arrangements. I leave my character sheet with DM, not wanting to lose or forget it the next time. I figure I'll just be hanging out in the NPC corner, or sometimes in Mage's game, another player would run an absent person's character. Cool. Fine. Saturday afternoon, I go back to the game as we're going to have a mega session. I ask for my sheet, and DM is basically, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> what? Game starts, and he tells me that I wake up at the bottom of a well. I am basically naked, and I have no equipment either. Again, I say, what? I'm told I missed the previous session and he had to do something with me. I'm sorry, it wasn't like I blew off the session because I was being a dick or something. I also hadn't been a dick during the game either. I spend the first, I don't even know how long, trying to get out of the well and being told that I fail. I don't remember any rolls, but I'm damn well sure they weren't all crap. After several rounds of trying to climb out this stupid well, something with tentacles comes out of the nasty water out of the bottom of the well and starts trying to attack me. Again, I've got no armor and no weapons. 
I've been on and off trying to call out to other members of the party on the off chance they're close by, given my character has no idea if they're near the graveyard anymore. Finally, one of them passes a perception check to hear me. I think it was KJ. Anyway, they come over, tie a rope at the top of the well, jump down, give me a spare weapon so we can kill the thing, and climb back out. I get my character sheet back, but I'm told to ignore all my weapons and armor for the time being. The rest of the session, we never find weapons or clothes for me, and no one has anything to spare other than KJ's sword. If I hadn't been carpooling with KJ and Mage, I would have left partway through. I don't show up for the rest of the sessions. Several years later, the DM, that same DM, is back in our area. He had been home from college during the game and had now graduated and was back in town for good. I'm told he's offering to run a game for everyone. I'm hesitant due to what happened previously. However, I get a message from him, apologizing for being an asshole to me and my character for missing a game session. He says he was being an overreacting, immature asshole, especially given what I was dealing with, and that he completely understands why I would say screw it and not come back. I relent and go with KJ, at this point we were actually married, saying that if the DM pulls any crap, we will leave. Everything goes great? And DM is now one of the regulars in rotation from then on. What started as a tale about DM being very immature about some real world stuff, evolved into a DM who was willing to mature themselves and to improve. This is always something I love to see. I also love to see a proper apology. Owning up to your actions is the first part of an apology and the most important part. So many times I've seen apologies of people saying, yeah, my actions were bad, but... And you know the ancient saying. You know, my brother once told me that nothing someone says before the word but really counts. Thanks, Benjen. But seriously, this DM didn't do any of that crap. He just owned up to his actions, and it's really great to see that. That is how you apologize. That is how you reconcile. Now, of course, with that being said, if somebody's dealing with real life stuff, you do need to be understanding of that. I do get that D&D is really important to a lot of us, but at the end of the day, this is a game. And real life stuff, like dealing with a death in the family, is far more important. Giving people grace and time is some of the kindest things you could do for a person in that kind of grief. And while the DM didn't exactly do it gracefully, at the very at the very least, they acknowledge their faults and improved in the future. You'll love to see it. Danger, danger, danger. After reading a few of these stories on the subreddit, I've decided to share my own. This was my first time as a dungeon master, and oh boy, I've learned a lot from this. The cast, DM, me, fighter, cleric, rogue, warlock, and artificer, the problem player. This all began about a year ago. I wanted to try my hand at running my own campaign, so I gathered my friends and pitched the idea. We all played in a homebrew game together before this until the DM of that game made the decision to go back to school and cancel the game so he had more time to study. Everyone was feeling a little D&D deprived, so everyone was game to play. A few weeks later, we have a session zero. I go over the intended setting and ask everyone if there was any subject matter I should avoid. Artificer had been on her phone the whole while, and at this, she perks up and goes, Imagine having a consent sheet for Dungeons and Dragons. We all laugh because, you know, we've been friends for a while and we were all super chill. If only we could see that as the red flag that it was. After that, we start the campaign the next week. Everything was going fine for a few sessions until Artificer started getting weirdly sexual both in and out of game. Some background info, everyone in our party is a queer woman minus Warlock, who is Artificer's boyfriend. The sexual jokes from Artificer weren't initially a problem, we would all just laugh like the immature 30 year olds that we were. Then one day, Warlock has to work late, so it's just us girls at this point. We were in the middle of some roleplay when Artificer randomly lifts up her shirt, flashing us all. We all chuckle awkwardly until Cleric breaks the tension and completely changes the subject by telling a joke. I don't remember what was said, but eventually we all just move past it. We had all been drinking wine that night, so we all chalked it up to her being tipsy? Until she did it again, a few sessions later, in front of her boyfriend, which made it extra awkward. We end that session shortly after that because it's just too awkward now. After I leave and get home, I got a text from Warlock apologizing on Artificer's behalf, saying and telling me that they're polyamorous and that Artificer has had a crush on me for a while and just didn't know how to approach it. Artificer texts me herself not long after apologizing and saying that when she smokes weed, which she does during every session, it makes her really horny. I am 
totally confused at this and just leave them on red. We managed to have maybe three or more sessions. How? I mean, seriously, I, I respect it. Like, that's a strong friendship, but come on. Anyway, yeah, we managed to have three or more sessions after this incident until we all have scheduling conflicts. During this mini hiatus, Rogue told me that she received an unsolicited nude from Artificer one night and doesn't want to continue on playing with Artificer if she's going to continue to be weird like this. I agree with her, and we decide to see how she behaves during our Halloween one-shot before we either boot her or bounce ourselves. Halloween comes around, and everyone has characters made for this haunted house one-shot. Artificer makes a character with enormous boobs that lack- <laughs> Excuse me, what the fuck? Anyway, yeah, that happens when she's stressed. Apparently the character was a wet nurse or something. Mind you, we are in a spooky haunted house, so her character is always stressed. We played the one-shot for maybe 30 minutes until we all decide, oh, screw it, let's just turn on a scary movie and drink. After this, I essentially just cancel the main campaign. Our schedules weren't lining up, and Artificer shenanigans were just killing the vibe. Killing the vibe! Yeah, that's one way to describe Artificer shenanigans. I don't know about this group of friends, we're obviously different people, and my perspective is of course skewed, but if any of my friends pulled this at one of my games, or hell, at any social gathering, I would question the continuation of our friendship. I mean, this is why it's important to talk about what you're comfortable with and uncomfortable with, because a hell of a lot of people would be incredibly uncomfortable with this situation. Also, I don't know the optics of flirting with Artificer's methods, but I have a feeling it has a very low success rate. It's clearly not working out here, and resulted, at least in part, in the destruction of this game. Which, yeah, it sucks when games fall apart. I don't take pleasure in that, but maybe this time, maybe it was for everyone's benefit. Now, before we end the video, something real quick I need to tell you guys about. I'm doing a special podcast episode next Wednesday, and it's featuring you guys. If you guys have any RPG horror stories or any D&D woes you need help with, just give me a call. Yeah, I'm serious. In the description down below, there is a link. All you do is go down to the link, hit the record button, and you can tell me about your D&D horror stories or D&D woes, and I will do my best to answer the best ones on podcast this Wednesday. Looking forward to seeing what cases you have for me to solve. With that special announcement, I think we're going to close today's episode of rpg horror stories if you guys enjoyed then please do leave a like if you want to see more of my content then you can check out shadow over Karakonos, my actual play DD podcast which has reached its conclusion the full series is available on youtube and i'm going to be uploading it to spotify later this week so if you guys enjoyed that then head down into the cards and while you're there subscribe crispy's time to get more of our content as it comes out and finally if you want to leave your own stories and thoughts go down to the comments down below if you can't think of a comment leave the comment just another main character to let me know you made it to the end of the video. Next, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Farewell.